Hello there and welcome into Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. Great to have you back here for day two. It is our, a spectacular Sunday here. I'm joined by the almighty Jimmy Fantastic, Andy Davo, and of course myself host here, Adam Savage. Uh, great to have you guys back in here. Jimmy, Andy, what a day we had yesterday. I mean, Andy, I'm, I'm going to start with you, my friend. You just competed. I mean, we've seen, we've seen the result. How are you feeling, my friend? It was it was a rough game, uh, rough dice, but he he played really well, and I felt the dice were a bit mean to me. Um, it's a shame to go out on the bubble, but never mind. It's it's a great event, and I'm glad we actually got we've got an event. I mean, Jimmy, I think you and I both agree full well that what Andy did actually he wanted to spend more time with you and I here on the broadcast team, and that's what that's that's what this is really all about. Yeah, absolutely. I said that in his chat. He's really <laughs> determined. He's really determined to cast all three games today. So, yeah. Well, He's well really excited. He's really <laughs> excited. He rushed his dinner. He can't wait. Uh, for you guys, though, to catch up to speed, we had a great day yesterday. But if you didn't, you missed any of yesterday, you're going to want to know exactly what's going on in this competition. You went brand new uh, to uh, the stream here as well. Uh, we've got you covered here. Let's have a look at the format of our show. I'm going to walk you through exactly how we got here and what is coming your way. Now, of course, Richard, this is the first weekend of two. Next weekend, we'll have our grand finals. Uh, qualifications, uh, first. First and foremost was the first stage here. There'll be a lot of play-ins here. Uh, Jimmy, walk us through the play-ins. So yeah, the play-ins had uh, 56 qualifiers. 54 of them came from the ladder. The top 28 and the top two of each race. And then the two people qualified from the NAF kickoff, kickoff event, which was the winner, myself, and Call Troop, the runner-up. And then they joined the top two from ladder in the finals, which was Artemis and Crystal Hunter. Lovely stuff. And you can see season finals here, 16 players in total here. I mean, Andy, we, st we started with 16 uh, yesterday. Already we've had four qualify through to next weekend. Only two will qualify today. Yeah, and, and I've, I think at the moment it's looking very strong for the, the uh, Artemis. I think he's going to do really well in the Artemis Strider matchup. Um, the Hero Diomed, I think that's uh, Dwarves versus Orcs, I think. Uh, and that's looking quite good for the Orcs. So yeah, Art plays his, uh, Orcs very well. So he should be looking strong to get to the grand final, which is impressive. Yeah, we, we, have, we, we have predictions. I mean, you guys did predictions as well here. It went, it went completely out of control yesterday because everything that we predicted, we just, it just didn't really happen as we imagined here, Jimmy. Yeah, no, I, exactly. Loads of people predicted Elliot winning the whole thing. Uh, we had like a whole challenge bracket set up in my community and loads of people predicted Elliot. And then, you know, we expected Elliot versus Crucer from the second round. We expected it in the winner's bracket and it was in the loser's <laughs> bracket. Unbelievable. And yeah, Elliot, Elliot just straight out. Outrageous. Outrageous. Out outrageous. <laughs> uh, and for you guys as well, obviously, you know, not only are we here to kind of celebrate and support the community and the players, everything going on here, but they are all gunning for that grand finals, the accolade of being the season finals champion, and also cash prizes up for grabs as well here. You can see on screen, uh, there's lots of cash that our players can take away with them, which is, which is great amounts of money that go towards their careers and whatnot on this, you know, their Blood Bowl careers moving forward here as well. Um, it's, 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 it's great as well here, isn't it, Andy, to actually kind of walk away with something kind of like you know a, a big chunk of cheddar as well here over the course of these two weekends uh it's fantastic to win some money too well it would have been if i'd have won the game i know, uh, you know for, the, for, the, for this for the eight people who've, who've gonna get past this round of matches absolutely uh nakon putting this up it's good maybe we'll get another one next year who knows like this is just great for blah blah Keep everything cross. Yeah, absolutely right. I think that, yeah, a testament to Aegon putting this all together for us here. Cyanide Studios, you guys all coming out, all the players for scheduling like crazy to make this happen too. It's been absolutely sublime. Now, our players have been playing like the clappers the last few days here, making sure to get their games in ahead of the, 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 the bracket rounds we've got as well here. Let's catch you up to speed there as well, actually, on exactly how the brackets currently stand. So first and foremost, our winner's bracket here. Uh, Jimmy, we've got four confirmed finalists going through to next weekend, whatever happens here. But boy, do we see some some wacky results over the last two days. Yeah, yeah. Huge, huge upsets. I mean, well, not really huge upsets, but this is the thing. Huge upsets in names. But really, you know, Diamond's a great player and Moomin Slay's a great player. So it's not too surprising that, that uh, Elliot and Crucifer lost and, and Elliot's amazingly gone out. And, you know, four we've got here going through. Hiru on Dwarves. Diomed on Orcs, Strider on Lizards, Artemis on Underworld. You wouldn't be surprised at any of those winning the whole competition. So, yeah, not not too surprising, but still quite surprising. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, Andy, it makes it makes it interesting as well, doesn't it? Like the, the different races available next year. There's a big variety in that grand finals. And looking at our low, a loser bracket here as well. Um, I mean, what what, what matchups we've got ahead of us too here? We're only going to have two players qualify to join those four for next weekend tonight. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be exciting. Which which games really stand out for you? So I'm kind of curious to see how Moomin plays against Narian. Narian's built his team with four block biggins and sorry, yeah, black orcs and two tackle. Black Orcs. Will those tackle uh, help him against the, the the mass swarming element of Underworld or not? Um, so maybe Inarian can actually do what I couldn't do and actually beat one of the Underworld. It, it is possible for him. Maybe. I, I'm, I'm opt I mean, Jimmy, are you, is it possible? Are you optimistic? It is possible for him. Yeah, it's, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't back him to do it, but it's possible. <laughs> uh, but you know, the Crucifers are interesting as well, right? Going through the losers bracket, there, nobody's going to want to face Crucifer, and uh, I think he does have what it takes to beat the Underworld uh, with his ability. So yeah, that's going to be interesting for sure. All right, well, we have three featured games coming your way uh, at the course of this evening as well here in our lower bracket. Uh, let's take a look and see exactly which one is coming your way first here. Our featured first game is one that you do not want to miss, of course. Uh, Call Troop versus Crucifer. Humans take on Imperial Nobility here. Uh, Andy, I mean, set this up for us. What, what, what are we going to see? What kind of fireworks are going to ensue? Well, uh, well, I think, uh, first of all, which is the faction that of those two which is favourite, and I think Crucifer's um, Imperial Ability typically beat out humans. They've got more control skills, and I think that they they should be fine. This is the human roster we're looking at here. He's got three guard, uh, a mighty blow, and a tackle. Then block on the thrower and catcher. That's fine. Uh, lineman down to 11, three rerolls and apothecary. It's all very standard for a human team. I fear that he's not going to have enough guard to punch through um, the next team. Which we if we could just bring that team up as well. I think this is yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really don't like the extra mighty blow. So yeah, I think he, he could have done with that fourth guard for sure. Yeah, He's playing into six here, isn't he? Six guard uh, into that versus three. And it's very similar stat lines. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean we, we, we always want you guys at home as well to obviously let us know where who you think is going to win each of these matchups we've got coming your way here. I mean, I mean, obviously having, you know, already competing in the competition to a you know, degree in that yeah, they're in the lower bracket now. Every t every player knows this is last this is last chance saloon here. Andy. I mean, is it is it a time to be a bit daring tactically? Is it time to kind of stick to your guns and what you know? Yeah, you know, how, how would you what would you what do you suggest might happen with some of our players here, particularly Cal Troop and Cruiser in this first game? What do you what do you think they're gonna kind of how they're gonna go about business uh, to ensure they get through to the next round? So I think you, I would still play the same same style that got you here in the first place. Like as Jimmy alluded to, you've had to go through multiple phases of qualification. You've earned your space here, so you're good enough. Therefore, believe in yourself and just play. That, that'd be my advice, and that's kind of what I did. It didn't work, so maybe they need to, to, to reflect on that a little bit, but that's what I would do. Every, every time he says it, my heart hurts a bit. I thought, I, th I love, I, we love you, Andy. We love you. Um, but I mean, I mean, I mean, do you do you agree as well, Jimmy? Do you think it's a case that we because we saw yesterday there was some kind of there, there were some there were some some gutsy plays, some gutsy moments. We saw that as well. I think that that last um, game against um, Artemis as well, and Calchu scores, and then with a couple of turns left, just kind of I mean, sets up defensively totally bizarrely. Yeah, yeah. He wrote in chat actually that he he believed it was overtime. He didn't realise there was a the, the there was the one turn chance for Artemis. He just thought he was setting up for the for the second half. But even his touchdown was was all wrong. Like he, he could have made he could have made it so much safer. He really risked everything on the last turn. So I think he was mentally shot a bit in that game. But you know he's had he's had the uh, you know he's had the chance to come back from that now, hasn't he? So uh, you know fingers crossed for him. He'll uh, he'll do okay in this one. I mean, we, we've got a, uh, you know, obviously Cal Troop and Crucifer is the is the first game featured here as well. Uh, the winner of that will play against either Dion Lord or Crystal Hunter there. Um, I mean, for the, to make it a more interesting kind of like game in round three, uh, who do you think would make a, a, a good opponent for one of those two that are in that kind of, yeah, potential kind of that lower bracket round three match as well there, Andy? Dion Lord, Crucial Hunter, Cal Troop, Crucifer, what would, be, what would be, do you think, a very interesting game to define who will go through to next weekend? Um, so I'd like to see Chunter do really well. Like Chun Chunter, I I know uh, and have known for a very long time. So Chunter is, is kind of like a friend of mine, and I'd love to see him do well. He's also playing Skaven, so it, I think I think that. 
Okay, interesting. Looking forward to seeing that. Um, and of course, as we keep saying, you guys were a huge part of it yesterday. We had such a, a great time. Make sure today to keep the chat alive here. I want to see loads and loads of energy here. For now, though, it looks like we have our game ready to rock and roll here. Let us know who you think is going to be the victor. It's Cal Troop versus Crucifer. Let's hand it over to Andy and to Jimmy as we dive on into the action. Glorious. Yeah, we've seen we've seen a uh, call troop here. He's starting with that deep setup that he made versus uh, Artemis here. The the really deep rule of five, which is an interesting setup. Very atypical. Normally you go two back in case of a quick snap, but he's he's gone all the way back. I I don't really know why. Do you have any ideas, Andy? Oh, I, no, I mean, is it optimal? I would say no. I wonder if he's doing it because he is scared that he might receive a foul, right? Because it. The Imperial Mobility would happily trade out one of their uh, their, their their linemen for you know, maybe that guard player on the on the corner. So by being so over the back, you pulling the team apart a bit more. I'm not mm. sure it's a great trade myself, but maybe that's the reasoning. And maybe to split uh, Crucifer's guard as well. Cruz has six guard here. Unbelievable. Uh, two blodgers and then, you know uh Coltrip does have tackle for the blodgers as well, doesn't he? So he's got a bit of an answer to that. But yeah, I guess yeah, maybe maybe if he makes the Splits the team around to try and split off the guards could be an idea, I guess. Do you, do you think here that, that if you were playing the humans with the Mighty Blow, you actually would be thinking about just trying to take this to overtime? Ooh, I'm, I, oh, he's got a Mighty Blow tackler oh. now. Look at that, Knuckle Dusters, amazing. Honestly, Knuckle Dusters is, is another reason to not take the extra Mighty Blow, right? Because you might just get Knuckle Dusters and have a tackle Mighty. Um, I think I think he's gonna. I I don't think he'll be aiming for overtime. I think he'll just be you know just playing whatever. I think I think both teams are gonna have to be happy with overtime, right? Like the the default the default state of a game between two pretty close level players is gonna be they both get the drive done, and it goes to overtime, isn't it? We've seen loads of overtime in this tournament, so I think that should be the your default assumption, if not plan, but assumption. Yeah, I, I assumed I was going to score on my drives and then see what happens. <laughs> yeah. It broadly worked, apart from once. Yeah. Put the skill, skill rings on here so you can tell, because the uh, <laughs> the the Imperial and Ability are not too easy to distinguish. Um, so you can see this one is the lineman with guard. He, he has the four, the four blockers with guard, and then he has a lineman with guard there as well. And, uh, oh, he's got a guarder back here. He's got the leader, uh, leader thrower. And then on the other hand, uh, this one is the catcher here for Call Troop. And the thrower is the one stood slightly differently and slightly less obscured by the ogre using the Inarian strap there. <laughs> I wonder why he set the, uh, the, the guard blitzer all the way back to go and fetch the ball. It, it seems a little bit overkill. It does, doesn't it? Um, it's interesting. I guess, you know, humans are fast, right? And he thinks maybe if... if Call, like if he fails the pickup, because he doesn't have sure hands. He's not going to re-roll the pickup, and then if he fails the pickup, then maybe Cold Troop puts some pressure on, and then at least he's got like a wrestler or a guarder to protect. Yes. But you'd thought a blitzer, wouldn't you? Right? You'd thought you'd have thought a lodge blitzer back to to help out, because then if you fail the initial pickup, then you'd want to carry on the blodger because you're likely under pressure. So I, yeah, I would have expected a lodge blitzer to go back. Why didn't he blitz with mighty blow there? I mean, it didn't matter, but but he's got he's got an extra mighty blow to punch into the mighty blow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. So See, I, I, oh, go on, sorry. Yeah, he, he would have got back behind the ogre as well, so it's not like he couldn't have got free, right? He would have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I don't. He would have. He's gone back to the exact square. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I didn't blitz with mighty blow. Is the answer? He's exposed his own mighty blow. Like the natural mighty blow. Yeah, yeah, plus the other mighty blow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was only looking at blitzing with the tackle mighty now, to be honest. And the, the tackle doesn't make that much difference, right? There's only there are two blodgers from to hunt. But uh mostly mostly yeah, either mighty blow hitting is fine. So turn two, bring ball to the centre of halfway yeah, halfway line, and then go and pick on the mighty blow. Because it's a danger player. If this is a removal, you want it to be on the mighty blow. 
Yeah, so pe people in chat are, are explaining to Malala Nus there. Yeah, it's not like normal chalice because there were ex there were extra qualifiers. Um, there was the the NAF play-in, which was like NAF style tabletop. Uh, it's called NAF. It doesn't mean actually NAF with a double F. It's uh, like the NAF <laughs> in the American football. They're, they're like, oh, there was a. It's basically, you know, Blood Bowl originally was like more of a parody of that than a than a parody of the old world. So, uh, and then you know, the tabletop organization that has taken that name, and so the NAF kickoff event was actually Call Troop finished runner up in, and that's how he qualified for this event. Uh, sadly, the winner was tragically eliminated in the play-ins, but you know, Call, Call Troop has <laughs> made it this far, so he's done he's done great from that. And yeah, it's it, so this is it's basically like tabletop. What is different from tabletop is the um, overtime format, right? Normally, normally you don't have overtime on tabletop ever. It's it's done with Swiss, and and draws are draws, and and you've got it. So you generally have to play more adventurously, in a, or recklessly in tabletop um, than you do in here. And here you can play more normally. You can play for your one one draw, and, and, and go for overtime and, and try and win in overtime a, a lot more consistently than you can. I mean, you can't do that in tabletop, right? Tabletop, you have to go for wins. If you want to win the event, which makes and elves yeah. a lot stronger, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It makes it. elves were really weak in this. Yeah, yeah. For sure, elves like it really harmed elves in this event. We, I don't think we saw any dark elves. Did we qualify? And only the one pro elves. Uh, only one person took pro elves and qualified. So you know, fair play to Galentio for qualifying there. But uh, yeah, it, it made elves not, not a cool choice. And you 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 got eleven fifty for this, I believe. Eleven fifty to build your team. And then like X amount of skills, uh, the good teams got six skills, and then the bad teams got a few more. Like you can see, Imperial Nobility here with nine. So that you know that redressed the balance a bit. And uh, it's a one D blitz. Wow. Gets the pow. And gets the KO. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That that was that was a choice, wasn't it? One dice blitz on that guy, and gets dodges away and gets the removal. So. No apothecary for Christopher. Any anything that uh, Coltrip does will stick. That that was really surprising. I, I don't know if you you, you were talking about explaining there. He had to dodge a guard out of the way so he could then throw the hit, which he re-rolled, and then he did the one dice fishing for the five plus, and he found it. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that he made a misplay there rather than. Um, I think he thought that was two dice when he moved. What he done. Wow, a shocking, shocking analysis from Andy Dave on there. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he surely, he surely thought that was a two dice. Yeah, I don't think you would have. I don't think you would have intentionally gone for the one dice there. This one's kind of fair enough, right? Because try and make something happen, but with it being the blitz with mighty blow, yeah, he, he, he must have thought that was a two dice. Must have done. We didn't wrestle it. Oh, didn't wrestle it. Wow. Okay. Which was the strange choice because it was his last action anyway, so I would have wrestled it. Yeah, when, especially when you've got a guarder, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a it's a lineman versus a bodyguard with guard. That's I don't understand that from Crucifer. And and you said a minute ago he hasn't got an apothecary, so anything that he does sticks. Yeah. He had the other mighty blow. Yeah, he could just move. I mean, he he doesn't really have him, does he? Really, like, do you think this mighty blow blitzer is going to GFI? I don't think so. Rush, rush. We've got to remember rush. <laughs> do you say rush, yet, Andy, or do you no, still say still GFI? Go for it. Yeah, some things that go for it. Yeah. So, so you know, you've got to imagine that Call Troop was happy with where that blitzer was, which therefore Crucifer thinks Call Troop is happy with where that blitzer is, and therefore it was the last action of the turn. So you wrestle and and don't risk a, a guard a. a Guard, bodyguard, like is an incredible player, right? He's he's what 110 TV, isn't he? As, as just so in pure monetary cost, he's worth a lot, and he's just a great player to have on the pitch. Wow, and but he's just as vulnerable to a knockdown as the human lineman. So the lime and the humans have got an apothecary as well, right? They are tougher. They've got 13 players and an apothecary, uh, and there's already one gone for for Cruz. So yeah, that was a really weird bolt down to take from Cruz. He must have had some kind of plan. But I don't know what it was. Maybe he thinks he has to get lucky. I don't know. I, I, I think yeah, this matchup, I, if he were giving me the two teams and said, pick, I'm playing Crucifer's team like 10 times in 10. Yeah. 
Dimmy, I'm sure, will be delighted by that statement, but <laughs> it, it is. You, you do play Karusa's team here. It, it's just stronger. It just is. I mean, he, he is down a player, like, on the drive, right? On the drive, he's weaker now because he, he's lost a bodger. So at this point in time, I think down a player, he is weaker. Um, but, yeah, before the match, I, you know, I'm picking... I'm pick, Honestly, I'm picking Crucifer on both team and coaching ability. Uh, Crucifer, absolute goat of Blood Bowl 2, wasn't he? He, uh, he dominated Blood Bowl 2 Chalice and, and, and Ladder as well, right? Like, you you knew every, season, every single season one of the two... Uh, Chaos Dwarf qualifiers was going to be Crucifer just every time automatic. He, he was, you know, he was hundred percent dedicated, complete legend. So, you know, I, I think I think Chris is a great player. You know, arguably the best the best coach in the competition. So, it's hard to bet against him against anybody. You know, he, even with Imperial ability, and they do have a good package, don't they? They've got these extra skills, um, including the double. But it's just how bad are Imperial ability is the question. <laughs> Like I think humans are a lot better as, as a team. It's it's just the skills package is the problem. Humans are giving away a lot of hits here. Mm. Push the ogre away, that gives you another hit. You're gonna get one, two, three. Presumably the blitz is on the guy marking the ball. Four hits here. Yeah, the only problem is you walk. Ooh. Nice removal. Walk forward, heard, but yeah. you know, he doesn't. He doesn't apple. I mean, that's why it's a good remove, right? Even though it's a badly hurt, you, you, you've got it. You've got to save your apple for the, the blitzers, right? Maybe the like, maybe the catcher or the thrower, but definitely the blitzers. So that that's a nice removal again, because he's just not going to apple it, even on the badly hurt. I'm curious where he's going to put the thrower here, because. I think he's thinking about just blocking with him and then blitz the other one. That's greedy. Oh. Yeah. Disregard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he I'm glad he didn't go for that, because that would be I mean like locking your player in place. If you then don't, don't roll a pal, you're asking to get um you know, smacked back the following turn. I mean he could have done the right he, he could have he could have done the block and then, you know, he could have Blitzed out the ogre. No, he couldn't blitz out the ogre. He could have blitzed with this wrestler and stuff. Like there's things he could have done, but I mean, I didn't think he was going to. But he, he could have done. <laughs> he could have done. Yeah. We don't know. You know, he's, we've just wrestled. He's just. We've just seen him wrestle a hit that we thought he would never would have wrestled. <laughs> uh, sorry, we see him not wrestle a hit he would have always wrestled, right? So, you know, maybe Cruz is feeling the pressure a bit. I'd, I'd like to start, see Cruz start taking, going for the attrition side of things a little bit, and, and just trying to take all the hits. Because I think in the first four turns, you should just be taking all, building it up to take all the hits you can possibly take. Yeah, it's it's one way of looking at it, isn't it? I, honestly, Andy, <laughs> not having a go, I think that's been your undoing a little bit in some of the chalice runs. So, you know, I think I think on ladder, you know, you play safe as safe as anybody else. And I feel like, you know, I think maybe you, you know, try to get lucky a bit too much in the, uh, in, you know, in, in some of those Chalice games. And, and you know, Cruz is just always, always safety first all the time. And, and I think I think that's OK. You know, even even against high level opponents, I think there's a lot to be said for just, you know, safe moves first and playing very conservatively. And that's a huge removal there. Uh, guard It's just the lineman. So it's it's not it's not the uh, stand firm, is it? It's just the lineman. Obviously, that's why I target him. Armor seven, great target. Yeah, I mean, that, they're the three things, right? First of all, you need to secure the ball. The, 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 there's three things that you have to do to win a game of blood ball, right? You've got to bash. You, you you really want to outbash your opposition. You don't have to, but you're always thinking about, you know, either either bashing them or not getting bashed. That's always has to be on your mind, hundred percent. You don't have to always maximize it, and then you have to protect the ball. That always has to be on your mind. And then also, like, getting the ball forward in a range and scoring, right? So, like, they're, they're the three things you have to do, and, and you have to balance those three. You pretty much can't always have all of them, right? You've, you've got to give up one to get the other. And it's it's interesting. It's interesting that 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 those decisions that you have to make to try and get things going. Yeah, sometimes I'm a little... Personally, I think that sometimes I can be a little reckless with ball safety, for example, because I'm going to go for extra damage. So balancing on that triangle, I think... 
I could be a little safer more of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is dangerous. It is, isn't it? Especially with the Wrestle Blitz, because, you know, you'd want to take the Wrestle, right? So, interesting. Interesting to not take the, these hits first. So, you must have had a... Must have had a... Yeah, hmm. Yeah, if he has a bad turn of block dice here, this could be a problem. This could be a big problem. He's now obliged really to follow problem. that up. He's got to follow that up. And he's put him next to the other guard. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Chain pushes. He can now push. Uh, yeah, if, if the turn ended, you've got a T-shape using the ogre that isn't bonehead on the side. You can push one of the guards next to the ball at that point. That yeah. I mean, you, and you can just you can just knock over this guy <laughs> pretty easily, and yeah. then you know. I guess you yeah. can't follow. I guess you can't follow. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting actually. Maybe this is fine. Honestly, the, the stand firms really help, right? I think the stand firms for Cruz and the fact that guards might let him get away with this, but uh, this, I mean, things can happen, can't they? This, you know, maybe he's an uphill, maybe a 1D. Some, you know, could make something happen here, Call Troop. I wonder if he needs to. Because that's, that's the other question on, on this at the moment is does he have to do anything? Yeah, the, the tackle Mighty Blow could blitz into the other bludging player that takes away Cruz's yeah. ability to move the ball particularly easily. And then you just yeah. take the hits and you just say to Cruz, go on then, fix it. You're yeah. now in a really bad state. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing, doesn't it, with the uh, the ogre going in there. That really yep. indicates a, a guard hit here. And then you can't get the guard hit here though. So the, the problem is just the masses of guard, isn't it? The masses of guard here for Cruz uh, is, is making Things, oh my god, another removal. A bit tricky for court. And this is the loser's bracket, isn't it? So the loser of this is out. Yep. And Crucifer's on the brink here, I'd say, without an, an extra removal. Three players down to only one for Call Troop. See, yeah, I think now, now I'm feeling if I'm the humans and I'm ahead, I don't want to be diving in and trying to knock the ball over. I just want to keep taking the hits. And, and, yeah. and actually, you talked about playing safe. This is that. Play is super safely now. You're ahead. Yes. Yeah, it's all about knowing like who the who the favourite is, like who the beatdown is, who who like the agility team is, and also, yeah, who's favoured to win and uh how desperate each player has to play and stuff. And like you've gotta you've pretty much gotta make the correct assessment on those, right? Because if if you don't and then and, and play appropriately, oh my goodness. Ooh. Or you, or you could make the wrong assessment and then get lucky, or you know, or you could make the right assessment and get unlucky. But I think that is critical to like the definition of playing well, right? Is is to make the correct assessment and react. How this all works out. And I, now, Crucifer's definitely going to feel <laughs> he is on the back foot here because this is brutal. And you know, Cold Troops now got to be thinking. I'm glad that he moved the the catcher up here, right? Get the catcher in the mix because he's got to be thinking about the counter score now. With three turns left. Uh, Cruz is thinking, how do I get out of this at nil-nil, I think. I think that's what Cruz is thinking. Uh, and now... Yeah, yeah, yeah not conceding now for Cruz is almost a win. That was a hell this of drive. a turn. This drive has gone so horribly wrong. Yep. Yep, so now all the all the safe plays are out the window for, for Call Troop, right? He, he Now he wants to punish. He wants to get in. He wants to turn this. He wants to make this 1-0 up at the end of half, half time for sure. Oh, ball carrier blitz to free up the guard and then just you know, bunker down for a turn? It's the question, isn't it? I mean, we've got the, the potato, as, as people call it, the uh, the unprotected ball carrier run through in, uh, into the uh, into the backfield and that he might just have to be looking at this, you know. These, these are the two choices for Cruz. Can he escape nil-nil or does he just uh, does he go crazy to try and get the one nil as soon as possible? And, and they're, they're both kind of valid and, you know, normally Cruz plays super conservative, but... With his tournament life on the line, you know, if he thinks he can get this, maybe he'll maybe he'll try for a just a dash and score. Oh, he, oh. I think he needed that ogre because I think he, what he could have done was the the logic could have blitzed around the corner here, couldn't he? And then stick him on the ogre. Whereas now, if he's he's not, but he can't base him with anything if he if he does power him. So, oh, oh my goodness, maybe he should have tried to stand up the ogre first just to see, you know, to see which way to go. I think 
you might even have to take the ball. I don't know how you're going to make this ball safe. Or where on earth are you putting it? Because you've got to defend. There's a gap on the side and there's a gap round through the middle and round the back. I think you have to run away and give it to the blitzer <laughs> and pray. Honestly, I think I think that's the play. Just run away. Oh no, he's still going for this blitz. Well, oh, but going extra to to push him that way. Okay. Yeah, I think he wanted to stick him on the ogre, but now he's he stuck him on stuck him on the bodyguards. Gets the AV break. I mean, that's massive, right? So now there's no tackle. So now handing off to that guy is is way better. Yeah, I, th I think handing off to him now is is definitely make a sideline cage with him, hand it off to him. Yeah, not sideline. Oh, wow. Oh, he's not. He's not handing off to him. Okay, I I really like not sideline, but you know, standing yeah, there, up yeah. there and then and then handing off. Yep. Maybe maybe if the ogre was standing, he would have like run in front of him and handed it back off, something like that. But, or squares, uh, can the thrower move? Has he got a little bit more movement? Is he potentially yeah, he him? has, but this is pretty good, right? He's protected by the two guards, so he's pretty invincible here. And, and with uh, okay, no, he's going sideline. Pretty invincible. I guess he's not that invincible, right? He could get uphill with block, but uh, and I guess he thinks this is safer. So. The problem is getting squeezed on this. Oh, so this dodge, this dodge makes it a lot stronger to go on the sideline because then you've got, then you've got a. Okay, he doesn't, he doesn't got a. I thought you'd have moved him out, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I would. Like, have done, get yeah. him in front. I would have got him in front. I guess he couldn't rely on this, this four plus dodge. So if he, if he left the backside open, maybe he thought something could happen around the backside. But I don't care if they come around the backside as much because then they've got less in front, right? You're scared of them getting in front and shutting you down as well. Are you blitzing the, the the bludge player here? I know it's not got you've not got tackle, but just pinning it to the sideline, or do you want to go somewhere else? Yeah, I think generally you want to like stop the deepest penetrating piece. You know, like the the, the guy deepest in your half is the one that you want to you want to blitz, and and when you, when you're playing safe. You know, I think, I think, you know, after saying like he, you know, <laughs> Coltrip has got to throw caution in the wind here. I think he probably still, you know, at this point that was a pretty good turn from Cruz. So then I think that switches you back to trying to play safe again and just get stuff in the way and, and you know, make sure you don't concede here. Because if you, if you ended this half at one nil, you'd feel so bad, wouldn't you, right now? So I think, yeah, I think he just has to lock it down a little bit. You could have made that three dice if you'd have put a couple more pieces in just along the sideline, which you're probably going to put there anyway. Yeah, very good point. Very good point. If those two guys and they, they, yeah, they probably should, right? They probably should come in there. Yep. So yeah, he could have made that a three D. Maybe he's thinking of putting this guard in afterwards. If this guard comes in here, then that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder. If... No, so that that player was stood there anyway, right? <laughs> you didn't need to do that. That could have just been stood there. You're on yeah. now. Ooh, two more assists. Maybe not, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yeah, he could. They're fast humans. Because if you think about it, you know, this player was here, right? So he, he would have had to run all the way around them. But yeah, he could definitely have gone there first. Yeah, and he's going to presumably move the catcher and the thrower anyway. Uh, I like the, leaving the catcher on the ogre because then you've got the ability to get out if you need to. Conga line. And the catchers, catchers in the making the conga line and the uh, throwers. So, yeah, I'm I, I, I'm with you. I 100% want the catcher on the ogre. He hasn't got block and you've got dodge. So even though it's a 3D, if he ever gets to hit it, as you say, you can just dodge up. And it also makes your catcher uh, closer for the for the counter score, right? If you if you ca if you leave your catcher here or even here on the ogre, then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you can get down and score. In, in the two turns that are left, I'd still be having an eye to the to one nil up at half time here, honestly, as as call troop. Um because Chris has got two reserves and these two can come back, and then he's only down a guard. You know, in the second half, it's 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 not too terrible for Chris if he gets out of this at nil nil, and and maybe even one nil up. But even a nil nil isn't that bad for him. Yeah, nil nil, fine. I it, I I'd love to see. Um... I'd love to. You've got to. You've got to play for the score. You've got to play more aggressively than this. You've got to go for it. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going to try and escape this? You standing at the guard, open one dice in the ogre, and then going from there, or uphill the ogre? <laughs> Start with the ogre uphill. 
and see see if you power it or wrestle it. Because that opens up everything massively, doesn't it? Like massively, massively opens things up if you do that. Th then you could then you could hand off to this guy and potato. All the way up to there. Yeah, because then you don't need to use the. So in that case, why don't we go stand up the guy that's I'll lying down? I'll stand him in one D. Yeah, stand, yeah, stand it up, one D across. That guy's now free. But then you've got to, then you've Blitz. got to dodge off, oh. and an uphill is better well, than dodge off, well, in... isn't it? Yeah. There. <laughs> Starts with the uphill. uphill. Four. Yeah. So that goes ogre to onto ogre. Then you've got the two D out, and then you potato. Yeah. <laughs> Which, if you haven't been watching, potato means to go and stand in the open and just hope. <laughs> yep. Just hope your opponent fails the dice rolls. <laughs> A classic strategy. Pioneered by by a by a coach who was whose coach name was Potato. That's that's why it's that's Ooh. why it's called Potato. Well, that's actually really annoying. It is pretty annoying. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Even even the push would have been so much better. But not using a reroll. You can get you can get kind of far away. Yeah, you can get really far away. Yeah. Imagine the um, the thrower, sorry, the uh, the catcher being on the ogre here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, yeah. Wait, the catcher. Oh yeah, the catcher can't reach at all. Yeah, so yeah, the catcher would have been pretty nice there. Is he going to GFI? I think he almost. I think he should have handed off first. I really like, you know, handing off first. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We'll block and then hand. He's dodging with this guy. Okay. Oh, oh wow. And a GFI. So is he going to pass it to this? He could running pass! Well, he could actually running pass! No, no, he's too far away to running pass. Tragedy. It could have been a chance to running pass, though, right? If he had more movement, he could have actually passed uh, from there and then, like, you know, GFI yeah. to here or something. Actually could have done. Could have jumped um, a prone player, actually, if you wanted to add extra nonsense. That, that was, yeah. again, you can running pass. Yeah. What he has so, done is he's given himself two scoring outputs. So the the bludger you've got to try and sack, and then you've got to go and tag the the, the guard as well. That's yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy to sack the bludger though, isn't it? But yeah, he hasn't got the recovery for it pretty much. So it's a double GFI. Did he just did one, but then he had to to make this pass a three plus. I knew he would have really liked to have been one further away. <laughs> really would like to have been one further away than this. No, no, I think maybe he did do both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, he just did one. Fails the GFI. Gets the pow. Oof. So he's no longer a scoring threat. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, this guy is. Where's the uh, catcher on the human side? He's this far away, so he he can get there if the ogre is cleared. But then the throw can get there if the ogre's cleared, and he's got. Is he going to go into scoring range? Oh man! So because you've got two choices, you either go to scoring range and try and play for one nil their drive, or you take the catcher and go and stick it in front of the wrestly guy now, just to create more problems. Yeah. What do you? What are you doing? I. I'm being greedy. I'm yeah. well. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I'm going for the score because the score yeah. wins you the game potentially. Yeah, I, you know, if this is a ladder match, if this is a ladder match, then I play safe. But if this is versus Crucifer, I go. I go for the score. That's basically that's that's how I define it. Yeah. Because and you I'm... know, Cruz, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get like better chances, right? And, so, so you've got to go for things while you can, I think. And you're actually really well protected here. If you make the pickup, you don't have to do the pass this turn. Uh, it's not easy to hit the catcher, and it's not easy to hit the ball either. Um, like, certainly not hit the ball and get it and pass it to this wrestler. So, you know, use your last reroll on this dodge off so that you, you at least get it. Doesn't need to reroll it. Gets it with sure hands, and. Uh, 
Oh, he does the pass. Yeah, I don't think he had to do the pass this turn, honestly. I guess it's a free roll and he gets it. Oh my goodness. Well. It was a bit of a free roll. It wasn't a total free roll, right? Because with the intercept, all of a sudden there's a guy that can run in the end zone and you can you could 1D this guy or something and, and run off. But, uh... And also, wildly inaccurate as well. That could have gone bloody anywhere. Yeah. That could have gone absolutely anywhere. Yep, and he did do the double GFI, so he's still in range on the pushback. Flip me. Yeah, the pass does not get the ball further from an uh, uh, Imperial Nobility touchdown space. No, that's the thing. Yeah, w wildly inaccurate. Could have just gone back. <laughs> back D6 or diagonally back D6. There, could, there were two horrendous wildly inaccurate results, and this one probably isn't good. Um, that, was, that was a bit ballsy going for that pass. Yeah, I'm. I'm not making that pass. I haven't. No. No, I think. I think just. I. I so yeah. So I. I like the the going for the score, but yeah, like you, I would have. I would have tempered it a bit, with leaving him in range to hand off next turn. Uh, maybe it's, you know, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you're in range to hand off. Uh, oh my goodness! Another one gone for Cruz, and this is huge. If this is a touchdown now. Then there's only one KO roll, as well as being 1 0 up. Massive, massive chances here. And they can clear this so easily as well. Yep. He has only got one reroll, so he should just only put blocks into clearing this and then being done. Yep. Make it 3 3D, I think. Oh no, sorry, no, you can't. No. It just needed a push, though, and gets it. And two GFIs now, and it's. Uh... It's almost done, isn't it? It's actually it's not it's not over, but it's it's very very. I mean, Cruz is on the brink. He, he is. He makes the GFIs. Decent decent KOs gets two out of three, but he, he he's still missing the blitzer, which is a big miss. How many humans got? Humans are still full strength. They're only down a lineman, and but they do lose mighty blow on the tackle. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> the knuckle dusters have been confiscated at half time. Uh, but, you know, it's night and really nice uh, kickoff result for the call troop, that wasn't What What percentage would you give Crucifer for pulling this back? Not because it's Crucifer, but because it's the matchup. No. Oh, matchup wise, oh, so if, you, if we take coaching out of the equation completely with the board state as it is, I would say probably. It, that's hard, right? Because now, now you basically essentially just saying what percentage is, is like team strength and with luck is the thing, isn't it? So it's it's tough. It's tough. I'd say maybe his Cruz is like twenty percent on on team strength and and luck. Maybe luck makes it a bit higher. Maybe twenty five percent. Not that bad. Not as bad as you'd think. Not not as bad as you'd think. I think. 19.32%. Yeah, I'll, I'm with Feynman. I'm going to go 19.32%. like that. We, what do you both, think, Andy? Um, well, I think it's probably... Cruz to, Cruz to actually turn over a full 11 without Mighty Blow, in the Mighty Blow, and receiving hits next, two of which are going to be a Mighty Blow hit. You, I, I think he's probably going to got about 20% chance to turn this round. Now factoring it's Crucifer, maybe that takes it up by another five or ten percent. One in three. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, here's here's a massive equity shift because that definitely ups it from uh, nineteen point three two percent to twenty four point nine seven percent. And if you don't get these jokes, it's from Dionysian, who is actually a really great tabletop player. Uh, Fumble Blood Bowl two. He's he's. You know, he, he organized the Dome, a crazy tournament. I uh, won Blitz Pit. Um, did he win Chalice as well? I think he might have done. Uh, I think he's um, won Chalice. Yeah, really, really great player. And he, he loves to make up just stats, like ridiculously accurate <laughs> assessments of who can win uh, as a joke. So, yeah, we, you know, obviously, all we can do is vaguely guess at things. Um, but... Yeah, that, I mean that's really that's really nice for Chris. Actually, that's just what he needed, isn't it? Especially if he can get a chip on the blitz as well. Yeah. It, on a slightly more serious note, would you actually go 
um, and push in as Crucifer here and and try and use the stand foam and the, the defend and stuff? Or would you try and stand back? How would you play this? Oh, I, I'm all in. I'm all in because because the natural the natural order of things is you you lose. You know, <laughs> like if you just try and play this normally, then maybe you stop him, but then you still lose one nil. So yeah, I think absolutely correct to to go. You know, try and go a bit crazy. Try that four plus dodge. I, I'm all for it. I'm all for trying to. Well, it wasn't was no dodge on that, so that was maybe a bit spicy. I don't know if Chris knows about the new rules. You can't use dodge and, and things like that. You can use once per turn on a blitz. So I'm not, I'm not, I mean, surely he knows that. He's played quite a few games. But it's one of those things that's easy to forget, isn't it, in the heat of the moment, especially with the pressure, you know? Um, obviously, Artemis knows that, you know, how to activate Rat Ogres to move them, but he made that mistake versus you, didn't he? So, yeah, yeah. you know, that's one of those things that can make just by the pressure of the situation, I guess. What about chat? Does anyone think that Crucifer can do this? Just sort of a yes or a no. Can Crucifer do this? We should be able to get enough votes out of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone. Wow. I mean, every it's Blood Bowl. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, you know, I mean, look, as, as, we, as we both, you know, said about, we, we put about what, 20%, right? Like, things can happen, you know? You just need one big hit. Maybe, you know, Kazanoga. That's that's really nice. That's a really impactful play, isn't it? And, you know, any 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 Kaz is going to be huge. Even stuns can be big. It, it's not over. <laughs> I'd like to see the humans try and get this and go in for a quick two-turn score and just and just put it beyond Crucifer, really. I wouldn't play this as a slow, grindy drive, which is what he's almost doing here with the catcher being stood next to the ball carrier. I, I don't like this. He has to play as a flexible drive now, doesn't he? The, 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 this is what makes defending so hard for Cruz, because normally you're used to somebody trying to score in two turns because you know that they're, they're, they've got two scores, two turns left to score. You've you forced them in, you know, like they've been, you've been forced in early, and they've got to try a two turn. Or um, in Blood Bowl Two, when it was overtime and sudden death overtime, which has now changed. In those situations, people would go for two turn scores. Oh my God, so that dodge is really being punished with a foul, oh. no send off, and uh, cast. So that was wow. If that was a mistake from Cruz, boy, how does it been punished? Equity is falling here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so so but so you're used to facing people where they desperately want to score on eight turn on turn eight, so you don't get to two turn back or you're facing two turns because it's it's the only chance they've got. And in this situation, he doesn't have to force a two turn. He can just score any single turn and he wins the game pretty much, right? So yeah. it's it's a nightmare to defend when people can just score whenever the hell they want. And and honestly, I think that like that plays into coaches like Inaran and, and Crystal Hunter who, you know, are still in this competition as as we speak. Um those guys, you know, trust their defense more than most people do. And and so they 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 leave themselves free to score any turn they like, and you know they they've got the confidence to 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 you know turn <laughs> people over on defense. Obviously, yep. you need to be playing the right team as as well for that. But in this situation, he doesn't need confidence in his defense. Cold troop being one nil up, any score ices the game completely. So yeah, that that freedom to to, to do anything is is just amazing for Cold troop right now. And the later the score happens, the more it it just ends the game. So I would like to see him put that catcher in scoring. Like, just go and run it next turn, eight squares forward. Go and be available to make Crucifer have to split his team up a bit more. Yeah. The the deeper that catcher stays, the less Cru Crucifer needs to worry about what might happen. Yeah, yeah. He has to. He has to. He has to. Like, you know, Cru Cruce naturally. So yeah. So we talked about the three things that like drive a game, right? On defense. Your three things are damage, always a factor, like outbashing your opponent. But then you've got to choose between uh, very similar to the NFL. If anybody knows the NFL, it's kind of similar, right? You've got you've got pressure, uh, like ball, like pressure on the ball carrier or cover. And in this situation, you've kind of got to try and do both at the same time. It's it's brutal, brutally difficult, because if you just cover and screen, well then it won't do anything. And if you pressure, then you might leave a gap, and he can he can scoot through it due to your lack of coverage. So it's it's re it, like it's so incredibly hard. But I think Cruz is right trying to get pressure in, but it's it's just it's probably going to pay the price, and it's probably not going to work. But then I think that's better than 
just you know playing safe and covering and it just definitely not working so yeah i, I to to the point of that is yes he needs he needs the threat of this catcher just breaking three if he doesn't have if he doesn't have the threat of the catcher breaking three then it makes pressure like better right yeah i, I didn't actually realize that he's picked it up on the catcher not on the thrower mm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, humans want it on the catcher a lot of the time. I actually quite like having it on the thrower uh, by default, just because you know makes the makes the pickup easier. And as long as you keep the catcher next to him, you can always just hand off in a pickle, can't you? So I actually do quite like having that skill roll, um, skill reroll for the handoff, rather than you know having to dodge away. Like uh, if, if this if this catcher gets based and you you can't do anything to free him, then he's he's got a dodge and it's a three plus with a reroll. But if you fail it, you've lost the ball. Maybe your catcher's dead, but if you, if your thrower gets in the same spot and he's got a catcher next to him, all of a sudden the failure state is like a million times better, and it, and even then the, the success state might be better as well because you know it gets you an extra ex, a fur, an extra square further away. Whew. Yeah, that was a tough um, one. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a there's a slight gap in the screen um, here, just a small gap. Oh, he's fixed it. There's a reroll. Yeah, there we yeah. go. That was it. <laughs> that was a pair of veil cage there. Yep. Yeah, that was. Whew. That was all kinds of wrong, but he 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 got there with a dodge. Still got two rerolls, and of course, Coltrip's probably going to be you know happy to put all of his rerolls in to to make the score here, right? To to attempt the score. Um, could backfire, but I think you know he has to throw everything into scoring and. Oh, or at least, you know, the more scoring, like things like this, protecting the ball, he, maybe he could be playing a bit safer. He doesn't have to bang it in early. He, ju he just has to be safe and, and give himself the chance to scoot past any pressure. I didn't think the overactivation at the end there was was worthy of activating because it was tying up two players. You're ahead, you're, you're up on players, so trading that out 2-1 gives you even more board presence elsewhere. I like that over just standing there doing nothing. And the bonehead... Yeah. You're now marking nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big risk, and and yeah, you know, lock the game down while you've got the advantage. Don't uh, don't try anything else. But, ooh, doesn't go for the three dice. He could have three dice the, uh, the guard there, couldn't he? With the, with those, he had two guards of his own in, and I thought he was going to three dice this guy. But he goes for the two D, gets the bad dice again, Christopher. <laughs> Maybe that could have been a reroll. I don't know how terrible things are looking from after this turn. Maybe not too terrible. Um, there's four on three here getting held up, and then what's this? Three, four, five versus five for the next one. So you know he's kind of holding his own a bit at the moment, Cruz. But eight squares forward, that catcher just goes eight squares forward. <laughs> but then you run the risk of, of dice happening, don't you? So um, I, a, li I'm a little sure bit, but I think agree. you can the, the the thrower can. If I take the take the eight squares forward, I just assume that's, that's charged forward. You can free up. Um, at least another one of your guards in that little middle pack to run with it, and uh, because that that player could have blitzed. I mean, you can you can still blitz here, I suppose. I mean, the thing is, the the freeing players is a lot different against Imperial Nobility, isn't it? Because you know pushes don't free them, so so you're banking on pals with that with that plan, and I'm not sure I like banking on pals. Or here we've got a double down. And now your player is out of the action because of the wrestle. They, they are tough players to uh, to get progression against, aren't they? So there's an argument for just seeing what happens with the blocks and seeing how secure your position would be. And it doesn't look very secure, does it? If you if you if you run forward, then What's maybe the now I think this this helps a lot, right? Because now it's a four plus. What's three the player plus that's, that's furthest back for the Imperial ability? It's three squares inside his half. Is that a, um, one of the peasants? Yeah, 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 we've got we've got peasants here. <laughs> Lots of peasants. The throwers the throwers here. All the guarders are bodyguards. So they're the only edge three players. There's not a lot of responsiveness for Cruz, but still I, I I'm not sure I just like giving him <laughs> even a four plus to two D me, you know, so I I, I I quite like keeping the ball back here. He's going for your line of play. Mm. Just because, again, you know, like Cruz has to pressure, and the, the more he, the more he pressures, the less he can cover. And 
Oh, here's the wrestle. See, this is this this was the problem with these blocks as well. It, suddenly, if you wrestle, there's maybe a, the a way through, and he did not like the wrestle there. Um. Makes the dodge, gets the extra guard in. Massive. Now you've got the extra two dice here, but again, if this is a, a bad dice roll, you're going to have to re-roll it. Makes the ogre activation. Again, was that worth it, right? Like, I'm with you, no, because he's, he's first of all, he's fended, and second of all, well, he gets lucky and makes a KO, but he's ahead, you know, does he need to do this? Maybe not. But then maybe he does, you know, like, Cruz is still, Cruz is still, oh, what? What? He's hit the wrong one. Surely he's hit the wrong one. Though. Surely, because he brought in the guard to make it a 2D. Wow. Well, I mean, yes. he's got away with it. He hasn't, he hasn't rolled a skull. <laughs> or a board down. That was a lineman. That was a lineman. Wow. <laughs> he's left 4 2 2 on the ball. In fact, the thrower in, in, in the, in the right hand corner can't that. Get round and hit the. Yeah, ball I don't through. think he's fast enough. Looking at it, uh, so he is. Yeah, uh, four, four, two, two. Though again, four, two, two. Yeah, four, two, two, or four, two, two. So the question is, does Christopher feel like he needs to do four, two, two? Pro probably not. <laughs> I think <sighs> he might. <laughs> it, like he is, he is down players. He lost, he lost more players, hasn't he? Um, he's got eight players now. Three players down. Maybe he's thinking he does need to roll four two two. I do think I do think you do this four two two though. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can knock him closer, and uh, and then have your thrower to pick up afterwards. But I mean, it's so grim. Like, how do you even win? Like, like how do you win if you don't do this? <laughs> like this this looks horrible, doesn't it, for Cruz? Feels like it's less than 20% now. Even with a lot of turns left and a lot of dice still to roll it, like it seems so grim three players down. Yeah. I think he's gonna go for it. Yeah, I think he goes for it. Oh, I guess you could you could uphill with a wrestler. Rather than making the dodge. That might have been an idea, but bad one. But it might have been an idea. <laughs> but he doesn't he just plays safe. Seeing Chris play safe so much, you know, over, over the years. With ball two, he, you know, he was always super conservative, you know, which is a good thing, right? Like he was always so so safe, and you know, major battle for everything, and and that's what he's doing. He's, you know, he'll he'll he'll, he'll get he'll get in better spots than you'd think it was possible for him to get in. Um, but oof, that was, I think he's, I think he had to, had to try to get luckier than this. It's interesting to see how the humans. I, I don't throw that block. He's got a two D with his last remaining. Oh no, with his last <laughs> remaining player. I don't throw that because at the moment you've got everything squidged together, and the humans yeah. are going to have to work to get players out. And if you're pushing in stand firm and it's just pushes, that's terrible. I'm yep. not. Now this is a lot easier to escape potentially. Yeah, it does. It does feel like that. But you know, maybe maybe Chris saw something there, and and you know. He, he, this is the this is the curse of being good sometimes, isn't it? You know, like you, you you'll find this on the ladder when you play somebody and you think, oh, well, I've got to guard against this chain push, and then you know they're not going to see it in a million years. <laughs> you roll your one in thirty six, and then you're like, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have bothered. So you know, maybe Chris saw like some some something crazy there and thought he he just had to make it. Maybe he just thinks he's tried to get lucky, you know? Like, it, it's not a great positional block, but look, what if he gets a removal? He needs the removal still, doesn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, maybe that was it, honestly. <gasps> Recognising how far behind he is. So he, he, he didn't he didn't feel the 4-2-2 was worth it, but he thought, you know, a block to randomly get a death like this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, um, he, it looks yeah. like he's going to be going for the dodge, which, if you fail, is very spicy. Very in fact, spicy, yeah. In fact, he is going for the dodge because that's where he's put the blitzer. I like the blitzer in the nine square on the sideline and then dodge into the square where the blitzer is. If you're going to go that route, I, I I think I would have played safer here and I wouldn't be going. 
That's yeah, awesome. well, he, he's starting nice with his GFI and fails. So, right. So, luckily for him, <laughs> he is. Uh, and and look, this it pays off. Crucifer pays off. Look, he's suddenly he's got the ball. He's got a two D on the ball. He's maybe got a surf. If uh, no, he hasn't got enough players to like probably set it up. But you know, he's he's suddenly got a two D on the ball at least that could go in the crowd. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was a double one, wasn't it? Like, that was his last yeah. reroll gone there, Cold Troop. Wow. Wow. The Noga block. Hmm. Freeing the wrestle to come through. Not really, though, because it's just a 1D. Free the root for the rest of it. Maybe he just wants to hit things. I, you know, there's a lot of times where I've I've seen Cruz play in Chalice, and I, I you know I thought I oh, will do this position, and he does just he just just hit because you know there's, it's really good to knock players over, isn't it, and get an armor roll like it is. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what he thought with that with that hit uh, that he did before. Oh, he's going to surf him. Look, he's going to pull the guy off the ogre. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's going <laughs> to. Oh, not if he follows, though. <laughs> no, no, he's not doing that. I really thought oh, I was going to no pull a guy off. I'm surprised to not see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys are going to... They are going to get pulled off. Here it comes. Oh, I think he's... I'm not sure. I'm not sure, honestly. I think maybe he should have just taken the hit, honestly. Like... That's it. That's... Unless Cool Troop rolls dub, dub skulls here. Stand everyone up. Safe moves first. Pile people in. And then throw the blitz on the thrower. As long as you don't roll double skulls, you can run eight squares away. Yeah. So this time I am running the eight squares away. I don't care what you say. I'm definitely going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you blitz him and run now. Because now he's he's committed so much of the pressure that now he, he does have that gap in, in cover, right? So, like, just time... Has, has got has got uh, has got called to be in a better position, but I think you start with that two D. I think you start with the two D, and then if you're going to pull this guy off, pull this guy off, and then go for the blitz for the the chain surf. But I don't think the chain surf was a good idea anyway. I just think you you just hit that guy, see what happens. Honestly, yeah, I didn't think that was a great last turn by Cruz. I think you just had to open that two D, and then then hope for the best. But. You know, fair enough. Like, maybe maybe he just wasn't good enough to do that 2D, you know? Just because he fails the 1 in 9 chance, you know? 89% of the time, this guy is still standing and, and Cruz does what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, this looks... This looks very done. Wow. Crucifer and Elliot. <laughs> Most of us predicted those two meeting in the, in the winner's bracket uh, round two. And instead, it looks like both of them are going out outside of the top eight. Unbelievable. Yep. In fact, of your top four, three of your top four have gone out inside the top eight, um, outside the top eight. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but to be fair, the, the, a lot of them played each other, right? It was the way it yeah. shook out was pretty wild. You playing, you playing uh, Artemis, and Crucifer playing Elliot. Like it was pretty wild that they, those two like matches were almost guaranteed to happen, right? Um, at some point, at some point in the tournament. So yeah, it is the Jimmy Fantastic curse. Yeah, I'm afraid to tell Art that uh, I have I have now gone gone back with Art. Now now Art is my pick, right? The the other three are gone. Um, Art is the favourite as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Strider, my favourite to win through the losers bracket, and Art my my favourite win through the winners bracket and win the whole thing. So yes, yeah, so, sorry Art. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy losing your next games. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. There we have it. It's not there's, yeah, this is just safety now, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's done, isn't it? There's the Cruz can't even I mean he, even if he can pressure, he, he then goes two nil down, it it's it's totally over. Big foul. I think not a well ma played match by Cruz. It's a bit harsh. I think it, there, there was a lot of dice in the first half, right? There was a lot of dice in the first half, and then that that made him, you know, try some riskier things, 
and then it, it, the second half again he was he was already in such a bad position he had to play he had to play high risk high reward and you, you're not going to get the high reward without the high risk I think he had to play like that and just couldn't get it done yeah, Croce's dice in the well it was um, Cold Troop's dice in the first half being strong uh, was probably one of the, the, the deciding points and I think Cold Troop could have even maximised more damage with more mighty blow hits if he tried absolutely yeah maybe working out whether or not it's even worth doing anything here <laughs> yeah yeah no I'm just gonna lie down end the game yeah it's actually better just end the turn for Cold Troop here so they don't have to set up again <laughs> it doesn't matter winning 2-0 nah no. he does anyway you can say he beat Chris 2-0 <laughs> but just you know he could have just ended the turn <laughs> But yeah, that's it. Same difference, right? Win 1-0 or win 2-0. Uh, even if there's a riot, uh, not riot timeout nowadays, isn't it? Even a timeout is no good. That is definitely Crucifer. Wow. Crucifer can technically draw the game. That's correct, actually. Yeah, AstroTor. So, Crucifer could score, could get a riot uh, timeout, score a one turn, <laughs> right? And then um, call Troop could then get blitzed on, and then Cruz could score from the blitz. So yeah, that is actually technically, it was technically correct to not score, and then you 100% win. Now you've given Crucifer a one in a billion chance of <laughs> winning this game. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, technically possible. Yeah, it, it, technically possible. It's not going to happen, but it's technically possible. Yeah, to, scoring 2-0 does does reduce the chance of winning compared to staying 1-0, yeah. I mean, by an, a completely insignificant amount, but still. Any any chance is better than none, isn't it? Yep. And no, well, obviously, obviously there, was, there wasn't a riot. Chris didn't try. And there you go, that's the match done. Amazing stuff. Congratulations, Cold Troop. Commiserations, Crucifer. Crucifer goes out. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> it's us. It's just the two of us. <laughs> Don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. T taxi for Savage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... we... Uh, there, there. Hey, hey, there, there I am. Hi. Hey. Hey. I genuinely, for a second, thought, have I just been like, like blank, like blocked by the team? It's like, we're, we're done with you, Savage. You're boring us. The jacket's too, too extreme. Too extreme for this scene. Um, guys, I mean, uh, yeah, taxi for Savage as well. I love that from you, Jimmy. I love that from you. Uh, love that. Throw back to yesterday. Uh, guys, I mean, I mean, what, what can we say? Crucifer out of the competition here. Jimmy, remind me as well to never ask you for the lottery numbers ever <laughs> in, my, in my life because yeah. it will not work out well. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, dare I say, Andy, a, a shock, a shock defeat there as well. Yes, he two zero, of course, but um, didn't really bring it when Cold Troop seemed like it was it was a, a match where Christopher could excel and just couldn't find the momentum or the way to get past him and secure the next round spot. Yeah, I, I, for me, the, the the first half was the defining uh, half, and Cold Troop just had much better casualty dice and. We both rubbish the mighty blow to start with. Well, actually, the mighty blow and the tackle really did work. Um, and maybe we should have picked humans. That's what I'm taking away from this. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I think in a vacuum, if they if they had equal skills, we'd we'd all pick humans. I think we'd all pick humans if they had equal skills. But the package was was the defining thing for the for the knobs, given them the six guard and the two blodgers. It was really it was a really cool package that. It, you know, we all thought would make them competitive, if not favoured. But ultimately, humans are a better team than Imperial Nobility, and and they're just they're more likely to execute the game plan. I think we'd all give Cruz for the coaching nod as well. I think that helped, you know, us to all tilt towards Cruz. But uh, yeah, just you know, he, he got it done, didn't he? Fair play to Coltrane. Indeed, yeah, yeah. I mean, even I mean, we, we looked yesterday and saw the kind of like, see, there was a kind of a, a minor mistake there in that kind of uh, match against Artemis there with uh, the I think it was overtime, but it wasn't. I mean, with Cold Troop as well, like even the defensive line at the beginning of the game. Uh, do you think that there's uh, 
Call to, I think, for, it seems it, it, comparatively to different kind of other players we've seen on the broadcast thus far, a bit more kind of easygoing with like flu, like fluidity wise when it comes to kind of setting things up. Like I think is that is that a, is that the humans as a as a race and faction there, Andy, or is that kind of a preferred way of setting up as a player specifically? What's what wh where, where does Call to lie there? Um, so I think Col we we both talked about at the beginning of the commentary. We're unsure why Call Troop's playing quite so passively. Uh, I think we would have both played a more aggressive defense, and he also didn't necessarily go maximizing his blocks when he could have done. Again, maybe that's quite a passive style. It struck me as being slightly strange in the first couple of turns, but boy, did he get paid for, for the hits he did take. I mean, humans are a really reactive team, aren't they? That's that's their like defining feature is that they they can they can outbash the the not bashy teams and they can outpace the bashy teams, and so that you know, Cold Trip like he, he beat three lizard men team to to qualify for the final of the NAF kickoff event, and you know like how do you even do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so so like uh, he's he's got he's he's some kind of like human whisperer. I, I don't understand it, but yeah, he's <laughs> he's, he's he's got the magic. The human whisperer, I love that. Um, I mean, interesting as well, obviously, Cold Troop goes through to the next round in lower bracket round three versus either Di uh, Dion Lord or Crystal Hunter or Chanter uh, in the next round. Um, who will Cold Troop be wanting to get in that round then, Ant? Who do you think is kind of of the two competitors who are going head to head? Uh, and I believe uh, we're going to go and check in with that very shortly here. But um, who would, would be a preferred matchup for Cold Troop? I, I thought I, if I was playing the humans, I quite like playing against Skaven. He's got a tackle, he's got a mighty blow. He should be able to delete some of the Skavens and make it viable. So um, I think Chunter, I think I think that's who I would pick.